now you can see, you know, what, what we have here. And, you know, again, there's there's nice storage underneath. We, we have quite a bit of storage here. Um, obviously, our mixer, we carry then dishes and so forth. And we usually have food in this one, okay? But then also, it even goes deeper in there, further back than that. We've got one then that we can carry bedding in. And then a little outside kit, so bug spray, things like that. Um, suntan lotion, a little first aid kit. And then another one here where, you know, Ziploc bags, um, you know, Kleenex, you know, simple things like that. So that's what we store underneath there. And it leaves you with quite a bit of storage. These boxes work out just perfect for that. You can see here, this detail here. Again, this is the two by four. Okay, there's the other 2x4. This 2x4 runs all the way to the back. And we'll show you from the back, but it runs all the way to the back, spans across the opening. That's what this is mounted to. This 2x4 then is mounted solely to this. So that way, this part moves, this part stays still. So to connect to this 2x4, and then again, this is the leg I made. And I just made it in there, drew it and cut it, and it has a little bit of an angle to it. I took an angle iron and screwed it in then on both sides and that would give it some structure this way. And then I simply took another L angle and put across here, and you can see it lines up with these hooks then for the chair. They're the metal hooks here. And all I did then was literally took a hose clamp and clamped it around. There really isn't much need for support here, okay? And that's because it's mounted so sturdily in the back that really all this is to do is when you're sitting on the back to keep it from lifting off of the ground. So it, it, you're obviously when you're sitting on, it's holding it down just fine. And it doesn't have any real way to move forward and back because of the way it's latched into the back. This is just a little extra support for that. And it also gave a nice um, uh, edge. So that way the things when we put them in the back there can hold on and, and not come forward. So it, it served a couple purposes. So now you can see where the storage is. Now you can see I've got a little, uh, pegboard here basic little particle pegboard and I did that because I want air to be able to travel still through here when you get back here it drops off into the storage for the rear seats that we use for our trunk so you have to have something then to fill that in and you can see again the 2x4 frame that I made then to bring that down to put this to it needed another little piece you know some one by to make then a frame to hold this on and we'll show you from the other side but that's what makes then this area storage so stuff doesn't fall into the back this part here these two pieces then are actually tied together with then fabric to hold them together okay the front piece then is independent of the others but it is held down by this one sitting on it. So I put these in with snaps so it could be removed um, if need be, okay? But basically now, if you look on the underside of this here, you can see this is just obviously snapped in, zipped together so you can change the foam if you needed to. But like I said, I've got about one inch, and this didn't turn out to be an inch, I think they're three quarters, but of yoga mat, it's compressed quite a bit from sitting on it. But then we just ended up adding velcro then so that way it holds it in place so you're not sliding on and off and then again this is just a harder rubber one eighth inch of rubber which brings it all then together so it's nice and level so you don't have anything that you're sitting on extra and then it's just velcroed into place so that way again this can't slide but it leaves you a nice hard firmer surface not hard but a firmer surface so you don't break through all the way when you sit on it and hit that. And truthfully, this actually is soft enough that it's not bad just by itself. That's why I don't think you need ultra firm here, but firm would be fine. On the back here, again, this is the two by four that runs the entire length from the front to the back. That's what I put the other leg on in the back. And then the same thing here. I had to build a small leg there, and you can see it's only, you know, an inch and a half or so tall. And that then, this actually then touches in the middle, comes back here, a little leg on the front, little leg on the back. Now, we talked about setting this up. So again, I have to pick this up so I can get this out of place. It actually worked out just perfectly that by the time I push this in here, this actually then, you know, kind of pinches in there and works to hold this up. So it worked out nicely just by pure chance.
now you can see this structure better. So this is what I was talking about. This is the one by, this is the L angle, and then this here, again, is just a little piece of aluminum square. I then drilled a few holes through it, riveted it together that way, okay? Sorry, roughed it up, put the glue in here, and then riveted that together. Same thing here, there's glue along in this junction. You don't need a lot of glue, I don't do it so it's all squishing out, you just gotta get it to fill that so you're just add, adding some structure. Again, some little stainless steel screws to then to hold this OSB in place. And then again, you can see now, this is joined together here, okay? This is the piece that didn't move, okay? There's a, a two by four here, and then there's again a little spot on the top that then uh, has another 2x4 on the other side of it, so they're two 2x4s two together, and then again a top on it like this. That is then how I mounted it then to the inside. So if you come down here and look, you can see this is where the stock bolt was that held the seat into place, little turnbuckle, and then there's another eye bolt then mounted into the frame. Put those two together, ran that through there, and then you can use that turnbuckle to tighten this down and pull it into the floor here then, which again, keeps it from sliding forward to back because there's a lot of friction there then. Then you can also see I had to add a two by two and then a one by one and the pegboard because I want there to be some airflow there. So you can still use all the trunk and the storage stuff then doesn't fall into the bottom there. You can see this part here is 12 inches and this has it, the hinge is there, and that's what allows this to then go up and down, and so forth. This piece here, this extra four inches, so this solid piece then here, this is, again, there's a hinge here and hinge there, this is then a two by four, okay? So it's three and a half inches, not exactly four, it ended up being three and a half inches, and then that's screwed then into the beam that goes across here. So that gives it structure then, screwed in here at the end, so it makes it H, and then this goes from front to back, and this is pulled down into the, to the floor, and that's how we then ended up mounting it all. But this is the, the piece then that ends up being wide enough so that way with this and then the depth of the cushion, this can fold up without having to remove all of it. So now that we, now that you've got the bed design, what would you change or do differently? You know, there's... Now that we've done like three trips. Yeah, it, there's not a lot I would do differently. Um, it, it, well, that's not true. There's a couple things I'd do differently. <laughs> I'd say that's not a lot. Um, I would use, I wouldn't use ultra dense foam for the mattress. It is a little too stiff. Um, because it's only three inches, I didn't want to be pushing through and hitting solid, you know, uh, uh, the solid part of the bed. That just wouldn't be comfortable. But with the foam in there, with the, um, the yoga mat in there, uh, I think just a, a, not the ultra dense, the one level below that would be just as comfortable yeah. and or be more comfortable. Um, so I would do that. The one thing, he didn't say anything about this, but I did notice because I thought it was actually really cool. So on his bed design, so you got this. So when you actually lay flat, and we kind of stopped early on one trip, he was actually able to flip this up a little bit that it was kind of like a ele headrest. elevated headrest. That's right. So while we were, you know, watching a movie or reading books, you can have that for a little bit and then you set it back down to a totally flat bed. So I thought that was actually cool. But yes, it is a little stiff. And this is then what Christine was speaking of. Basically all I did was just bolted that in there and it, it is just a small, I just put a little angle in it, put another little piece of L angle here, riveted in place, and now it's got a, a nice spot so then your head can be propped up when you're, when you're sitting. Thank you for listening on, in on the three parts of this whole minivan bed design. It was come highly quick crusted and I hope you understood that all. I know it is very detailed. My husband is a very detailed man and a very thorough and sturdy. That thing will not break. If you have any ideas or things you want to, you know, question, stuff like that, hit us up in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. During 2020, I have to say the minivan camper came as a blessing because we couldn't really fly anywhere and it wasn't safe and 
being able to just take a quick road trip for a weekend was great because then we got away from the house and didn't feel like we were all always cooped up at home. Let us know if you've actually embarked in your own minivan camper or van life and share with us your journeys as well. Comment below, like this video, love to hear from you. Bye.